Hi, everybody, and welcome to our 4-H Clover Bud Night. Tonight, we're going to be talking about pigs. My name is Emily Allegar. I am a former Pennsylvania 4-H'er. Um, I showed pigs and sheep and goats and did some other projects as well, uh, like woodworking and tie-dye. And now I am helping in Ontario County uh, with our 4-H Clover Bud program. Hi, I'm Cindy Harnett. I'm a leader here in Ontario County as well. I was a 4-H member in the state of Wyoming, but I never had pigs. I did other projects and now I'm helping with the rabbit and the bug projects. So tonight I'm just assisting Emily because she knows all about pigs. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. We're excited to talk a little bit more about pigs in the 4-H program. So just a little bit of agenda that we have. So we're gonna talk about some equipment that you might need if you have pigs, different breeds of pigs, the life cycle of your market hog. We'll talk about some fun pig facts and we'll also touch on some showmanship aspects. And we have a special guest speaker, Grant, who is going to talk about his 4-H pig projects with us. So to get started, we're gonna think about some equipment that you might need for your pig. So I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. And I'll add, what equipment do you use for your pets? Because it might be pretty similar what you use for your dogs and your cats of what you would need for a pig. So I'll give you a minute to think about it. Yes, Cindy? How about something to water them with like a watering bowl? Yep, you will, yep, exactly. You'll need a watering bowl like you would need for your cat or for your dog. That's a great one, Cindy. So we'll jump into it. So equipment that you might need for your pigs when it comes to food. So pigs, of course, will need something to eat. So you can see a picture of a 50 pound bag up in the top of pig food. So pigs eat corn and soybean meal and minerals and everything that they need will be in that 50 pound bag. You'll also need some kind of pig feeder. So down here, you'll see that we have both a big silver self feeder, and then we also have a black feed dish. So sometimes we start our little piglets out on a feed dish and we'll scoop the feed with this pink pig feed scoop, and we'll put some in the dish for the pigs to be able to eat out of. And then maybe once our pigs get a little bit bigger, we'll move them on over to being able to use this big self feeder. So this top of the self feeder will open up and you can pour one or two big 50 pound bags in there because as we'll learn, our pigs start to eat a lot as they get bigger. And like Cindy touched on, we'll also need equipment for our pigs water. So right there in the middle, these big white long pipes you can see our PVC pipes. So this is what we consider an automatic waterer for pigs. So we can fill this big long pipe up with water with a hose or with a bucket. And then on the bottom of these pipes, there's this silver nozzle. So our pigs will push down on that nozzle right there and the water will come out of the pipe for your pig to be able to drink. Sometimes we'll also use these black buckets over here, a water pan like we saw with our food dish. So if you want to use a water dish, it's a good idea to use one maybe in the winter time when your water might freeze. So sometimes that's the best option if you have water for your pig in the winter. It's also important to note that your pig might be used to drinking out of a water pan when they're little. So they might not be used to these little silver nozzles over here to get water. So you have to train your pig to drink out of the silver nozzle. And usually if you just sit by it and you call your pig over and you pet them and you push down the nozzle, they'll get the idea pretty quick that that's where their water comes from. So then we're gonna talk about some show supplies that you might need for your pig when you take them to the fair. So something that we all need when we go to the fair is some shampoo for your pig. So down here, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, we have a specific swine conditioner and shine shampoo, but you can also use um, the shampoo that you use on your head, on your pigs at the fair. And you'll also need a hose nozzle. So you can see that right next to the 
shampoo um, and the fan right there is a nozzle. And sometimes it's nice to have nozzles that have different settings on them. So depending on what you're using it for, you can change the setting. It's also important to have a brush for your pig. So you can see up in the top right hand corner, there's a black brush. So you wanna keep this brush with you while you're in the show ring. So if your pig gets any uh, wood chips or anything dirt on it, you're able to wipe that right off of your pig in the show ring and put it, clip it right back on your pants. And we also usually try and get something to make our pig shiny. So pigs are prettiest when they're shiny. So right over here on the left hand side, you can see something called Pro Pink. And there's also right next to it, some baby oil. So both of these are good options to make your pig look sparkly and shiny before he or she goes into the show ring. And we also have a fan down in the bottom right hand corner. So sometimes fair can get pretty hot because it's in the summertime. So if we have a fan, that's a great way to keep your pigs cool because pigs aren't able to sweat. So you might see your uh, pig panting and that's a sign that it's hot. So sweating like a pig is not a very good term um, because pigs can't sweat. <laughs> So finally, we have down here one of the most important things that you guys will need and in preparing for your show day too is a whip or a cane or a pole or some way to walk your pig. So I have a whip as an example down here, um, but you will need some way to tap your pig to get them to walk in the show ring to go where you want them to go. Because as you guys know, we can't put pigs on harnesses to walk them like we can with sheep or horses. Okay, so there are many kinds of pigs, but in the US we have these four top breeds of pigs because these are the most common breeds. We have Yorkshire, Duroc, Berkshire, and Hampshire. And now let's talk about the differences. So the first and most popular is Yorkshire. These are all white pigs and their ears point up. And here is a picture of Rosie, who was Emily, one of Emily's market, uh, market pigs, who was a Yorkshire. Next slide. The second most popular breed are called Duroc. These are all red pigs and their ears flop down. So that's how you can remember red and ears down. Next. Next slide. Third most popular kind is a Berkshire. And the Berkshires are black, but they also have white on their face, legs, and tail. And their ears point up as well. And here's another picture of Emily's pigs um, that she used to have when she was in 4-H. Next slide. Here's an example of the fourth most popular breed. These are called Hampshires. And these are easy to remember because they're black with a white belt around their chest and their front legs, and then black the whole rest of the pig. Um, we have Grant and his sister in with their pigs, and then his sister's pig, um, who is at the... Um, who, who is getting a bath, who's getting her getting ready for the fair to do that. So that's the Hampshire, but there's a couple other kinds as well. Next slide. So some other pigs we have, um, there's a spotted pig breed, and there is Emily with her pig name Spot. And then we also have um, crossbred pigs, and the pigs in the opposite picture, just a, a group of different pigs. Some, um, I think there's a Yorkshire, a Hampshire, and a couple of crossbreeds in there as well. So there are a bunch of different pigs, but remember the top four. That's it for pig breed. Thank you, Cindy, that's awesome. So next we have the lifestyle life cycle of a market hog. So the first part of the life cycle is called gestation. So the word gestation means when a mama 
pig is pregnant with her baby pig. So a mama pig is pregnant with her baby pigs or her gestation period is 114 days that she'll have those baby pigs. So that'll be three months, three weeks, and three days before she gives birth to her piglets. A guilt, as you can see right there, is called uh, what we call a female pig who hasn't had any babies yet. And she's ready to have babies at about 220 days of age. After delivering piglets for the first time, a uh, mama pig then changes from a guilt to a sow. So her new name is a sow. Um, and piglets, when they're born, are very, very small, and they only weigh about two to three pounds when they're born. So very small when they're born. The next part of a, the life cycle of a market hog is what we call farrowing. So farrowing is the time period from birth until weaning. And weaning is what we call when we um, take the little pigs away to live on their own. So right there, you can see just how small baby piglets are when they're born, that two to three pounds that we just talked about. So sows and gilts are moved to the farrowing barn when she's ready to farrow or give birth. So you can see that the big mama pig is in what we call a farrowing crate. So that's where she will stay uh, while her piglets are safe and able to uh, get some good food and milk, um, but also be safe so she doesn't accidentally sit or lay down on anyone because she is pretty big and they are pretty small. So you can see that this mama pig has a lot of piglets. So usually a sow, so a sow who, that uh, is a pig who had a litter of babies, will have around 12 to 13 piglets per litter. So that's a lot of kids to keep track of. Um, and then typically uh, piglets will be weaned at about 21 days of age. So they'll stay and drink milk for around 21 days. And then when they're about 13 to 15 pounds, that's when we wean them and move them on to the next stage. So the next stage of a market hog's life is when they're in the nursery. So this is when they're about six to eight weeks old. In this stage, again, they're moved away from the finishing barn into another barn. And there they will eat uh, corn and soybean meal diets, and they'll eat up to about one and a half pounds of food a day, up to four pounds of food per day. And then in this phase, they usually grow to about 50 to 60 pounds. So typically, whenever we would get show pigs, we would get them around this age, so or this weight. So 50 to 60 pounds is typically um, around the weight that you will get your market hog. So the final stage we have up here is the growing and finishing stage. So this is 115 to 120 days or 16 to 17 weeks. So pigs are moved to accommodate, accommodate their growth. So they're gonna continue to grow um, and they're moved into finishing houses. And there a pig will move to consuming six to 10 pounds of feed per day. So if you remember, we had that big feeder, that big silver feeder back in the beginning so we can put a whole bag, a 50 pound bag of feed in there for our pigs to be able to eat um, for a few days. And they'll be monitored to ensure that they're healthy just like you guys do with um, your market hogs. And then at about six months of age, they'll weigh probably around 280 pounds and that's when they are ready to go to the fair. So that's about when you guys would take them to the fair um, to be shown. Okay, so now we have some fun pig facts. Um, pigs are one of the 12 animals of the Chinese zodiac. And I'm gonna show you a little pig decoration for the year of the pig. Historically, um, with the Chinese zodiac, um, pigs were considered to bring, to represent wealth and luck. Um, the animals in the zodiac, there are 12 of them, and they rotate, they each have their year. The last year that was the year of the pig was 2019, and we're in 2021, so this year is the year of the ox. Next slide, please. So some other fun facts. 
Um, baby pigs can gain um, two pounds per day, which is a lot of weight for a, a little animal to put on consistently. They have a really great sense of smell, so they can smell if you're bringing them snacks, particularly marshmallows. Um, it's well known that pigs are smarter than dogs um, and trainable. Um, only one college has a pig for the mascot. The University of Arkansas has the, what they call, it's a wild pig called the Razorback. And that is the mascot for that university. Um, there are pigs all over the world. Um, lots of people keep pigs and there's over 2 billion pigs um, when they last counted, I guess. Um, another fun fact is that pigs are afraid of heights. So you got to make sure that um, you don't put your pigs in a situation where they're going to be afraid and they're not going to want to go anywhere. And pigs are related to um, javelinas. Some people call them peccaries. They're in the Southwest United States and other places. And pigs are also related to hippos. So back to Emily. Did not know that pigs were related to hippos. That is interesting. So we also have a special guest speaker tonight. Uh, Grant is going to share a little bit about his 4-H pig experience with us. Um, and with that, I will thank everybody for joining us. Uh, thank you, Grant, for having uh, being part of our pig conversation and sharing your insight on your 4-H pig experience. If you guys have any pig-related questions, you can contact uh, Grant or your local extension office um, and Sarah as well. So thank you everybody for joining us. Good night, everyone. <laughs>